Hi, and welcome to another Hopper on 6502 uh, video from the 6502 on the Retro Shield playlist. Um, developing quite a little range of uh, videos here now. Um, this particular video is not about the Retro Shield, though. Um, it's about how you debug your program. So uh, let's go back to uh, where we were. So we were editing that sort of Hello World program. Um, and to be able to debug, we need to be able to make something take the place of the serial port that's connecting between us and the device if we want to debug locally on Windows. So if we go and look into the serial unit that we've used before, we were using a simulated version of the Motorola 6850 uh, that was simulated by the um, Arduino runtime on the um, on on the Arduino device, but we can also use a different uh, device, and that's all we have to do. So if I switch to the Apple One uh, to simulate um, the serial device, let's go back. Now it's going to use um, the Apple One's got a, um, a prog programmable peripheral in it. Um, it's a sixty-eight twenty-one, and I've used and, and we'll build again. Right, so now we're using the the Apple. So let's see uh, if we go um, more. Go and have a look at our listing. Um, our initialize is now initializing. Uh, it's actually is it even called? Yes, yeah, calling serial initialize. And that is down here, and yet yeah, setting up the Apple One uh, on that device, and it's setting up reading and writing through the Apple One. And I initially did the emulation of the Apple One because, just like everyone else getting up and running on 6502, one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to run Steve Wozniak's monitor, and that uses this simulation as well. So now um, we've got a another tool in the tool chain called the emulator which is e6502 any of these tools you just type them with no arguments and tell you what the arguments are so it says uh, dash one will use the apple uh, serial port rather than using a synthesized serial port to debug which is a whole different story and then the name of our program which is hello.asm all right so just like that um we've loaded up our program into the uh, emulator. If I look at the source code, there we go. Initialize, loading up our character, running around in circles. If I press F5, hello hopper, and it's expecting a key between each um, attempt. Control C, we'll break out of it. So let's have another a little closer look at that. If we type a question mark, it'll tell us what our what our commands are that are available in this debugger, this emulator slash debugger. So what are we looking at here? We compiled the 6502, a very simple 6502 program in 6502 assembly using the Hopper 6502 assembly toolchain. We then loaded it into this emulator, which also serves as a debugger. This interface in the emulator is very similar to the Hopper monitor interface. The commands are all the same, so the way you set a breakpoint is the same. So um, let's set a breakpoint. Uh, let's go open warm restart. So let's look at source code. So let's set a breakpoint when we're about to when we're loading that um, first character from the uh, data. So that would be on line on instruction at FC1C. So breakpoint one at FC1C. It's up to 16 breakpoints. Actually 15 breakpoints. Breakpoint zero is used by step into rather than step over. So let's set that breakpoint and then we F5 to run, which is the same as typing V. And it ran until it got to our breakpoint. So it's about to load the accumulator with our first piece of data. Um, let's uh, step over that. And we can see now that our accumulator has changed to hex 48, which is the hex for the ASCII character H. Um, we can go look at our source. If we look at the memory page at FC, there's our source. And there's the hello hopper. And there it is, 4848. 
and it loaded character zero because y's got zero and it loaded it from the address fc00, which is over there. Um, and now the next instruction is about to e execute is branch if equal, um, which means branch of the zeros flag is set out of here, which is not going to do because the zero flag is not set. Zero is not set. So f10 over that. So instead, it's going to go to the next instruction, which is this jump subroutine to write the character. And if I press F11, I'll step into the subroutine. So that's the same as step into. So let's look at the instructions again. So step into F11 is to step into. Step over is F10. So I'm going to step over this instruction with F10, which means somewhere on the screen, we should see an H appear. And we did. There's our H. Right. Now it's going to increment Y. So where's Y? Y is 0 currently. And if we press F10, it'll show us the registers again. Y is now 1. And now it's going to jump back around to uh, FC1C. There we are. And if we press F5, it's going to... Um, oh, let's set another breakpoint. So breakpoint 2 on... Uh, let, where do we want to put the breakpoint? So let's show the current source. And let's put a breakpoint 2 at... Let's do it every time after we've output a character. So that would be FC21 and F5. Oh, FC21 is before it outputs the character. So let's reset that breakpoint. Breakpoint to FC24 and F5. So there's an H that appeared on the screen. F5. Oh, we've got the other breakpoint still set. So we can clear all breakpoints. We can't clear a single breakpoint and then set another breakpoint to, what was it? FC24. Right. F5. L. At the cursor here. And another L. And an O. And then if I just clear all the breakpoints and press F5, it should do all the rest. Low hop at 250. And if I press Enter, now we're running the program again. Okay, let's do one more thing. Um, let's look at source code again. Let's, we'll restart uh, source code again. And let's step into that uh, function this time. So we step, we step, we step. Uh, now we're, on the, we're, we're about to initialize. I'm going to step over the initialize. And, oh, and I stepped into the initialize. Disable interrupts, etc. So it's in the serial, mo the serial uh, uh, unit here. So it's, there we go. Did sit, I'm stepping into everything right now. Oh, I think it's because breakpoints are set. All right, now we're on the right, uh, right char. Uh, oh, I stepped over that. Um, let's, let's set a breakpoint today. Uh, breakpoint uh, one, FC21, and run today. And this time I'm gonna step into it, step into the right character. What does the right character actually do? So we step in there. Uh, we're now in serial right char. Um, and all it does is it, it, well, it first calls poll read, which is how it, 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 it's not running on an interrupt right now. It's actually polling every time you um, use any of the serial, it just checks for more serial characters. So we'll step over that because it's a little too complicated. And then after that, it jumps into the one from the device driver. So it'll jump into serial write char for the device driver. And if we can now look at the rest of the source code for that. So what is it doing? This is actually talking to the, in quotes, hardware. So it's checking the control register on port B to see if bit seven is clear yet, which means um, the port is ready to accept another um, character to display to the screen. Because this is simulated and it's, it's always ready, so this will always be um, clear. So I checked that bit instruction will set um, the uh, sign flag, which is the negative sign flag in the top here, and it'll set the B flag based on what is in that port. So let's see what it does. So in this case, both of them are still set to zero, and it, branch F minus will run around in a little loop here, so it'll go backwards back to check again. But it's not minus, since the sign is zero, it's not set, it'll, it'll jump past, it'll go past that, and in the next instruction, it'll store uh, so let's see what it does. So it's going to store the accumulator, which is currently this hex 65, um, to that port register, which should cause it to appear on the display. So now we'll see what um, what is hex 65. So if we look at, uh, what was that, M, 
FC again. So hex 65 is this character here. Move one in. Difficult to tell just looking at it like this. Oh, it's uh, two before the space. So it's an E. Okay. So um, so we're sitting about to put that out. So if we step over that, we should see an E appear on the screen, I believe. There we go. The E appeared. And there you have it. Um, how to build your own 6502 um, programs using the Hopper toolchain and how to actually debug debug them using this 6502 emulator that's part of the hopper toolchain um, on windows so much easier than trying to debug on your device it's easier to debug on in an emulator and there's a lot more features in here that um, you can explore uh, what i haven't spoken about yet uh, like you know showing the registers this, the call stack, uh, the value stack, um, and there's different features. Um, and I use this tool to debug the runtime itself, which I built, um, you know, I first got it running in the emulator. So the hopper runtime, the minimal runtime that runs on these devices is quite a big hopper program. Um, uh, it's depending on which configurations you use, it can be between eight and 12 K of uh, 6502 assembly. So to get that up and running on these devices, I use this tool. That's why I built this tool. Anyhow, thank you for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of the tool. Uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, playlist. Um, all these, all these different little videos on on the same subject. And if you're more interested in the Hopper language itself, uh, there's a Hopper language playlist as well, which is platform, not platform specific. Um, if you want to engage uh, and participate a bit more, uh, send me a message on YouTube and I will send you an invite to the Discord server for the Hopper Discord server. Cheers.